Hey everyone, my name is Justin from JusticeGood.com and in this tutorial I'm going to be doing an effect that someone requested via email about how to create that dodge and burn sports photo style photo. So this effect was actually requested by a lot of different of you guys over a different amount of times but recently Joey B here sent me an email saying hey Justin I was checking out so many tutorials on YouTube and notice you've done a tutorial that's been requested of you. Uh, I've been trying to do a tutorial on how to do this burn and dodge style. I've been seeing more and more and here's some examples that he laid out and I thought this would be a good one because I have been asked this before so let's get into it. So the first thing we're actually going to do is just duplicate your original layer and then go to filter other high pass. Now you want to turn up the radius of pixels until you get something that starts to look like this where you got kind of a blurry outline of the photo and it's a lot of gray involved. Essentially what this is doing is creating a burn and dodge type of effect but simply with a filter when we apply a blending mode onto it after. So I'm going to use 28 pixels there and you see what mine looks like just for reference. And then I'm going to set this layer on overlay or hard light. It's up to you. I'm going to use hard light for this one. If it's too harsh, you can use overlay. Next, we want to create another layer, and that's a hue saturation layer because we're going to uh, take the background and make it one solid color like in the example. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. So you're just going to check colorize. You're going to turn the saturation up to about 40 or 50 and you're just going to pick a color of your choice. So since I'm trying to stay true to the example, I'll pick a blue color like Joey's email had. So that looks about right. But now I don't want the player to be also blue. I want the player to remain in color. So since this is a new adjustment layer rather than just an adjustment on top of a layer, it comes with a layer mask and I can use that to mask out the player. So you could grab your pen tool if you wanted to create a really precise selection, but more often than not you should be able to just get away with using the quick selection tool. So I'll use the quick selection tool and I'll work with a size that's comfortable for me to select all the parts of my photo and I'll just create a quick selection. Also notice I'm working on add to selection mode, that way I can let go of my drag and then pick back up and it'll just continue adding. Also note I'm switching back and forth between the add and subtract from selection modes to clean up any parts that got mixed up. Once I have the bulk of my selection selected I like to press the refine edge tool and then just grab the brush and brush over any parts that I might have messed up on or are a bit choppy. So I'll press OK and then we just want to fill our selection in with black while we're working on our hue saturation layer. So the easiest way I like to do this is to just grab the gradient tool, set it to the default black and white gradient and linear mode, and then just click rightwards if it's going white to black and you should fill in the layer with black. So now I can command D to deselect and I have my color and then my background blue but there's one more step we can take to really get that burn and dodge style contrast and that's going to layer new adjustment layer black and white and just press OK and then we're going to take this black and white layer and we're going to set that to overlay so that's going to add that intense desaturated contrast. I know that sounds like two opposites but we're desaturating the color of the photo and we're adding contrast to it. So if you wanted to take it one step further like in the example Joey emailed me there was a bit of motion blur going on too. You could go back to your original photo and even though mine had a nice depth of field going on already you could go to filter blur motion blur and add a bit of that if you wanted to add some of that motion but I think that it starts to get a little bit too much if you, go a little, if you go a bit overboard on all these different effects. So that's pretty much how to get that intense dodge and burn photo. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys all for always emailing me and Instagramming me and sending me suggestions. I do appreciate and read all of those and try to respond. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys next time.